in the policy breakdown. I feel like I'm a church singer. Um, folks, the president proposed the budget, the 2014 budget. Now, there's been a lot of huss, fussing and hussing and mussing over this budget, budget thing. Now, what I won't do, America, is I won't do what you think every other... Pro I'm not going to do what you think I'm going to do, which you think I'm going to go and rant and rave about unch unchanged CPI. <laughs> not happening. Not happening. I'm going to leave that to all the folks out there that are very passionate about Social Security and Medicaid, or Social Security. I mean, not that I'm not passionate about it, but I think there, that story is better told by those. There's other stories to this budget that we need to talk about that beyond chain CPI, which seems to be the only thing that is everybody's talking about. There's a lot of good things that are getting lost in the cracks here. So I'm going to give you the policy breakdown on the budget, the good, the bad, and the oh-so, oh-so, very, very ugly. Now, the good. This is what this budget does off the bat, right? So this budget is going to create jobs. Um, it, it, inv it invests money in education, in manufacturing, and in infrastructure and small businesses. On the, on, on the infrastructure part, um, and I have all of my papers in front of me, I've actually broke down the budget for you. Um, the plan would, it would immediately, the budget will immediately give $50 billion for immediate infrastructure investment. As noted earlier, to repair our roads, the bridges, create jobs, and you know, the foundation of growing our economy. Now, everybody who knows, watches this show and knows me knows that I love transportation, I love transportation spending because I think transportation spending is one of the greatest ways we can prime pump and power our economy. Why? Because for every $1 billion you invest, in those create real jobs, right? Because roads can't be built without people building them. Point blank period. Like, you can do research with computers and stuff like that. But when you think about roads, you're going to need everybody. You're going to need the guy who lays the cement, the candlestick maker, all that. It's all those people. Agree there. It's a good thing. Shout out for the president for investing in infrastructure. Now, this used to be a bipartisan ideal. The ideal of investing in infrastructure, everybody agreed with it, both Republicans and Democrats alike. Now, Republicans, not so much. I don't know. Right? Um, the other part of this, the, the other part of, of this whole thing is that the, the, the other part of this budget, the president is really committing, committed to, you know, creating a stronger America. And that means investing in our future. He's talked a lot about, you know, how we, you know, create STEM or, you know, force folks to go into the whole ideal of science, technology, engineering and mathematics in the K-12 portion of education. And the president's right here. You know, a preschool for all initiative that would basically raise a cigarette tax or what we call the sin tax, a sin tax to pay for every child getting a chance to go to preschool. And we know the fact, the statistics out there show that the, the, the earlier we get our children into the classroom, the higher likelihood it is that they go to college, the higher likelihood they become successful parts of our society. We're one of the only countries in the world that don't invest in preschool and make it mandatory. And the president's moving in the right direction here when it comes to the education issue. So I give him props for that. Two thumbs up, Mr. President, pushing for preschool education. Good stuff, right? Now let's continue talking about this budget. And it does, like I told you, it does a lot of really good things. The other thing this budget does is it fixes the tax code, right? Um, you know, it pay, basically he would... He would raise taxes um, on high income. He would get rid of all the loopholes, which is what we want to. He'd implement the Buffett rule requiring households with incomes over a million dollars to pay at least 30% of their income in taxes after charitable giving. Raising taxes on millionaires and billionaires so everybody pays their fair share or the Warren Buffett rule. And, and so, you know, that is, it raises revenue. And beyond that, the president also in this budget will expand the American Opportunity Credit, which allows for families and students to get a, a tax credit for you going to college, as well as the Earned Income and Child Tax Credit to help millions of working families make ends meet by putting more money in their pocket, around $4,000. So every family would get four, additional $4,000. He would extend that to more families, as well as you know make the American Opportunity Tax Credit permanent, a, a tax credit created by George W. Bush to help those, uh, those families paying for college education to get a chance to pay for their education by giving them more money in their pocket. Mr. President, two thumbs up for that. That's the good America in this budget. On point, progressive, right way to go. The other good 
is the fact that the president has put in his budget to raise the minimum wage. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. So don't go anywhere. We're going to have that conversation. But let's talk about the bad and the very, very, very ugly. Now, the POTUS budget would also, when it comes to Statford loans, now we know the facts on these, that right now the Statford subsidized loan interest rate is at 3.4%. That number will, that interest rate will double, will double on June 30th or July 1, the interest rate will go to 6.8%, basically doubling the, the Stafford loan interest rate, right? What the president has suggested is the plan in the budget, what would it would do is it would tie the Stafford loan to the, the, the interest rate of the 10-year treasury bond or the 10-year 10, 10 treasury, or 10-year treasury, right? Which means the next 10 years, the rate would raise to, you know, about 6.8%. Here's the problem where the president gets a uh, bad from Richard is when you tag, when you peg the interest rate to the treasury bond, right now it's a good thing because treasury bonds are low because we're in a recession. But God forbids we go into a period in which there's a lot of fast money is what you call it in, you know, in economics. There's a move, money moving really, really quickly, moving really, really fast, right? The interest rate's gonna go up to curb spending. When that interest rate goes up, that means it's also gonna go up on students who are trying to get an education. Now, with that being said, the caveat is this loan only affects those new individuals borrowing loans, not those who already have loans, which I'm, pre I'm getting to the very, very ugly. Just hit, you stay with me and I'll bless you, right? So the president is basically saying that we are going to let Wall Street and the market dictate how much students pay for their education when it comes to federal Statford loans, one of the most popular of all the federal loan options that exist in the marketplace. America, this is a bad thing. These loans, the, first of all, our government should be in the business of making sure that our students get educated. Just like the president was for preschool and STEM and K-12 education, those same standards should exist for secondary education. Secondary education should be a right if you want to receive it. If you want to go to college, the government should make it as easy as possible for you to go to college. Not peg you with a loan interest rate that is linked to treasury bonds. It basically puts the students out there in harm's way all the time. That is very bad. Now let's get to the very, very ugly. Now, while this budget does extend and make permanent the income-based repayment program, so you cannot pay more than 10% of your discretionary income in federally backed student loans, it does nothing. He doesn't mention a word, America, about the trillion dollars of student loan debt that exists in America today. Not the private loans, not the public loans. Now, this is the worst, let me repeat, Student loan debt at the time when most of us took it out was a good thing. It was our way because we thought whatever we put in, we would make this money as soon as we graduated college. But for those of us that graduated in this recent period, for those millennials, the economy tanked. We ain't making that money. We're not making that money. This is the worst debt because it cannot be discharged in bankruptcy. I would have liked to see the president say, I want to reform bankruptcy so that student loan, rate, student loan debt can now be discharged in bankruptcy. That was not in the budget. We, I would like to see the president say, we need to find a way to help students deal with this trillion dollar student loan debt. That wasn't in the budget. We cannot wait. We shall not. We should not wait. And we won't wait for real and true reform to student loan reform. I'm sorry. I talk about this every week because it's important. There is a trillion dollars of student loan debt out there, America. This can tank our economy. Let's stand up and fight this. The president needs to be harder and do more on student loan debt. But we have to demand that. We must demand it. We'll be right back on the file show after this break.